Yeah, direct misfire, aiming up hits Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix Follow along, stay up to date Comment, like, subscribe today Hello champs, and welcome once again to another Direct Misfire Missive. Joining me today, as always, is Selick. Hey, hey. As well as returning regular Hugh. Howdy. As we try to remember what happened in our last two tournaments, or in my case, try to forget. We'll also have a bit of a chat about the upcoming Kings of War 3rd Edition rumours that are milling about. So pull up a seat, grab a drink, and let's get into it. But before we get into today's main topic, we need to first add to our brand new Kings of War army that we're creating, the Cloud Giants, yay! Um, so what were the results from the uh, listener feedback? Who, What did they vote for and who won Selick? I think it was the Giant Piffers that won this time. Excellent, that was a unit that I liked. I suppose all, I like all of them. But, um, Those are the guys <laughs> time that for huff the... and puff and blow your house down? No, these are the ones that pick up another unit and throw them at something. So I didn't prepare too well for this one. Um, so I'm going to skip all the other units and go straight to the Living Legends because I had these jotted down from a little while back because I thought they were cool. So we've only got three choices to choose from this time. Yes, And again, these are all Living Legends. So we'll start off with the first one. I called it the K -K Combo Breaker. Uh, it's an unusual... War Machine, it's a Living Legend War Machine, it's got an 18 inch ranged attack that whatever it hits, it'll remove any special rules from that unit. <laughs> so it kind of nullifies them. You still right. get your attacks and all that, but if they have crushing strength, no more crushing strength. Inspiring, no inspiring. Ooh, so I thought that would interesting. be interesting, yeah. That's cool, yeah. Uh, the second one we've got, the <laughs> it's a Living Legend monster. It's a giant ant called Jai, so the giant ant I don't know if you got that, because he's yep. giant and it's an ant, and it's a giant ant. Anyway, so <laughs> it's a fast mid-stat monster with dread. It's kind of like the mascot for the giants. They love that thing, and if it, if Jai dies, then all cloud giant units get an extra one-inch charge range and vicious for the next turn, because they want vengeance. I don't know. I just thought it was a bit cute. <laughs> and the next <laughs> one we've got is a living legend large cavalry unit the Riders of the Storm. So they've got similar rules to the Stormcallers from the previous episode. So they have a, a Lightning Aura, but these guys are riding Storm Clouds. So they're Speed 9 Shambling, Large Cav, not Nimble, with that um, Aura, and they also Inspire. Mm, interesting. So what do you reckon, Hugh? Who are you voting for in this one? The last one sounds like the most realistic option in terms of it not being sort of overpowered and... Like, provided it was the right amount of points or whatever, that sort of uh, got precedent there. And that sounds mm -hmm. like it would fit really nicely with the rest of the army, but I'm, I'm interested to know, what's the fluff behind this strange living legend catapult thing? The combo, the cooker combo breaker? Yeah. Well, they... How is it that they remove, they shoot, like, spells of confusion or something like that, or what? I don't know. It's, a, it's an unusual device, so it's kind of science and magic fused together into this mm -hmm. weird floating metallic ball of weirdness. I don't know. That seems like the one I'd have the most fun playing with. It just seems compelling to, like, remove big shields or remove uh, inspiring or something like that. Mm. And it just, like, it would have a lot of different applications, which I think sounds fun, without being mm -hmm. necessarily overpowered because you're paying points for a war machine that might not hit and that kind of thing and it is a war machine as well so someone who runs into it will get triple attacks mm, yeah like if it was four plus to hit or something like that i feel like that would be reasonable and mm -hmm. i don't know how many points but sort of war machine level points that seems like it wouldn't be overpowered at all because you know it's not actually doing any damage but it does sound like a really cool effect so i'm going for mm -hmm. that okay and selick that's a pretty easy decision for me i think uh, as they all are. So, just to recap here, we've got the c -c Combo Breaker. So, the, yes. the War Machine that debuffs. We've yep. got the Monster Ant, or the Jai Ant, yep. uh, that sort of comes in, and if he dies, which he, hopefully he doesn't, because he's the mascot, uh, does sort of buff the rest of the army for a turn. Or we've mm -hmm. got the Riders of the Storm, which is a surgible unit. So, first I went Riders of the Storm, for sure. But then I realised that we're going to have to then have Surge in the army. So it's going to really... Pot, which hasn't come up yet. Which hasn't come up yet. So now we're pot committing ourselves to getting Surge 
It doesn't you know. mean you have to have surge. There is such thing as armies with shambling without surge. Yeah, the the abyssals, for an example. But yeah, it's like it's it. sort of it limits the unit a bit because it's movement nine, which is really really fast, but it can't march. That's all it means. Like you can still charge yep. eighteen, so it's not really like that huge a limitation. Yeah, but I, I still like sh- surge shenanigans here. So that one ant to me would be straight out. So now it's down to the combo breaker and the giant ant. And for me, it's the giant ant all the way because <laughs> uh, I just love the... I want to see you painting a whole heap of ants on banners. So, mm-hmm. And right. that, that, that to me, so go Jai, you giant ant. Okay, so mm. I both, I'd like both of these because I thought Rise of the Storm was a bit too flat. Sure, it's they're okay, but... Um, they're not a giant ant or a cooker combo breaker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go with the the combo breaker. I think that one's <sighs> got it. Yeah. I just think it's very different. But we'll leave the ch- second one up to the listeners. Uh, so the you've listeners. got a choice between giant ant, Jai, or the Riders of the Storm. Cool. There you combo. go. So like only a two choice, that one. Your poll's going to work now. Bye, Jai. <laughs> In your face, guy. <laughs> if he was a flying ant, then he would be a fly guy. Ooh. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why, what are we here? What are we talking about? Since we last recorded, I think we were waffling about going into Convict, which is a two-day tournament in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just recently, we've actually gone to Hammerfall, which was a, a smaller tournament, only four rounds, but all on one day. So we're going to have a bit mm-hmm. of a, a chat about those. We won't go into too much depth. Um, obviously, that's going to be a a lot lot of of rounds it's a lot of rounds so in convict that was seven rounds but most of them are smaller points though yeah that's correct so what we might do is we'll have a a bit of a chat about convict first up when was that so that was on the 20th of july okay so two day tournament and a scaling point system so two games at 1495 is that right that's right yep and then two games at 1995 and the second day was Three games at... 2250. Okay. So how do we want to do this? What was the first scenario? Invade, I think. I've got my sheets here, so the only thing I don't have is round three. For some reason, I've lost it. I've got too many sheets of paper. <laughs> okay, so what did we all take? I took the Ogres. I took Ratkin, the most powerful army. Uh, yep, I took the Elves. Now, I've got to say, I was never happy with any of my lists. Mm. I can confirm um, that. Very I wrote many a list. And just ended up just picking one that thought maybe was okay, seconded by Selic, just to try and reassure me, and so I didn't have to think anymore. But <laughs> we'll start off with the first one, which was Invade. Um, what do we say? 1495. The first round for me, I was up against Jeff. Um, he was rocking a Ooh. rockin' dwarf list. Tough opponent, round one, Jeffrey. Yeah, I thought I was going to... I was in a good position, and then... He shot my characters, they wavered straight up. Um, I failed to route units that I could have routed easily, and he routed my units that needed a very high roll twice, and then that kind of crumbled. <laughs> so, oh, shit. It's, I didn't roll very well, he rolled very well and took advantage of it. And because it's such a small points limit, one or two units gone, and then mm. there's no coming back from that. Yeah, I've found that a lot at this points limits, is that you have less of those clutch moments. Sometimes there's only mm. one in a game and that can make it a lot more swingy. Because mm. the biggest point in this one is his Brox um, faced off against my fancy Braves. I took the Living Legend Braves and he made the charge because my entire army is only speed six, so he's getting the charge off that. And he did a, a decent amount of wounds, but these guys are fearless. So he needed like a 10, I think. Twice and he rolled it. Oh shit! That doesn't happen very often. No, because if he if if they survived, I'd be able to hit back and probably crush him as well. Hmm. And then I just oh. rolled the flank. But I did what I could, um, and he pipped me. Uh, what was the score on this one? Fourteen seven to Jeff. Um, that was the point. But then you got it, the attrition and scenario bonus. It ended up being a twenty one zip. So it sort of went downhill pretty quickly there for you, but Jeff was running a pretty difficult list there. Dwarfs uh, are tough. You take some rocks, you take some organ guns, you take some brocks, and you set. I actually mm. kept all my uh, sh- re- report sheets for this event and then threw them out 
before going to Hammerfall. Because <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're not talking about that one. <laughs> Just chuck that. I took on uh, Peter Spiller uh, for my round one with the elves. And so Peter was running some undead. I was, I'll blow my own trumpet here, I was all over him. I had combo <laughs> charged a big unit over on the far left-hand flank in turn six, or I think it was, or turn five. And I was all over it, did like 30-something wounds. I had a dragon in the side that I didn't even bother rolling. Rolled snake eyes. And he countercharged, killed my uh, spears. And it was that countercharge that killed my spears um, that actually got him back from me having a big win to him having a draw. And then I got him up on the attrition point. So at 11-9 win i guess an 11 9 draw for me on this one mm-hmm. a but positive all, draw all down to uh that bloody snake eyes 30 odd wounds Grr. yeah good thing snake eyes is staying the same in next edition isn't it oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> i hope not otherwise we'll never okay, see you... spoon again yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, your first round like if you can remember well i can't remember a lot but thank goodness for okay TTT. my round two then <laughs> Tabletop Tourna- TO, the, the, the system that we use for it, I can actually look up who my first round opponent mm. was. So I played Sammy, Sammy um, who was borrowing a pretty cool ogre army. Um, I do remember, what, the main thing I remember about this one is that I was flapping my demon around, uh, just causing Sammy all kinds of grief. But he maneuvered really, really cleverly to do some tricksy stuff, which prevented me from ever getting a decent charge off with him as I recall so even mm. like I recall him putting two ogre hordes back to back um, you know facing sort of east and west if you like to the table just to avoid me having any way of getting in there because you know I was in the wrong arc to get in uh, and, and similarly sort of strange manoeuvres in order to, to keep me out but I did manage to run a lot of rats over the line um, and it was sort of, I ran up the right, he ran up his right, and uh, it was close to bloodless by this, in the scheme of Kings of War. Uh, so it was a 10 all in the end. Mm. Uh, there was a few moments where it could have swung. It definitely looked like I was going to win. I think Sammy needed to play significantly better than me in this because my demon and a couple of other units really sort of uh, had him on the ropes. And I just sort of was e- easily able to walk up the line because his army was a lot more elite. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, he played outstanding manoeuvring and uh, just, yeah, stopped me getting in. So I ended up keeping it to a draw. Hmm. All right, round two. Um, I faced off against Tim Huggins, who was running um, Night Twilight Kin, is that right? Uh, Twilight yeah. Kin, yeah. I just, it was an army of uh, biz- uh, witch elf type things and, and some chariots. So the scenario was loot um, and... In this one, I just thought my army could not do anything against his just from the matchup. His army was all speed 7 at least to my speed 6. And he had low defense, high number of attacks against all my berserkers and whatnot. So <laughs> just going to chew through them. Um, I did manage to have an MVP of my little goblin on a, on a mount with the diadem of breathing annoyance, which managed to take off two, maybe three troops of the... Nice. Ladies. I love that little guy. Uh, he's so annoying, so good. Yeah, but great. it was that's all I could do. I couldn't move forward because he would charge, so I kind of tried to shoot as much as I could before he charged, which he did, and then I crumbled. Um, yeah. So that ended up with me losing 219. I'm not going so well so far, bro. Taking into account that this is a 1495 game, you got 1,055 attrition points. Mm. So that must have been a bloody battle. Yeah, he just yeah, I couldn't get the loot tokens. <laughs> so for me, uh, Hugh and I did a bit of a swapsies. So he took on Peter Spiller in round two and I took on uh-huh. Sammy. Um, okay. And it didn't go well for Sammy. Um, I pretty much diced him off, unfortunately. Um, so I won't go into it too much, but uh, it ended up being a 21 zip. Um, and he, he only got my BSB from memory, which was vanilla, so only right. 50 points. Those so, dinosaur chariots are scary, man. You just shoot them off, did you, or did you? So I'm pretty sure I got, just from memory, I shot at them. So I moved and shot in the first turn, I want to say. And I did like five wounds and then diced him off. So oh, pretty good. 
Yeah, I think his inspiring was just outside from memory and yeah, just got unlucky with that first dice roll. And then, as we said right at the very, very start, at 1495, you lose a big unit like that. Um, and I was just able to really dictate where where that game was going. Mm, well played. Well, I uh, yeah played Peter Spiller. What, what was Peter playing again? Undead. Undead. Right. Ah, yes. Lots of scary flyers and stuff. I was sweating the first. I think in my uh, the forty minutes or whatever we had to play this game, I think I spent about twenty five of them in turn one, just trying to like work out how I was going to move to not get charged by like four different units because he had so many flyers, all those spirits and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But I think I was lucky in that he didn't concentrate, or I managed to spread out enough so he didn't manage to concentrate all his flyers on any one target. Um, and we had a very even game on the points, uh, so very, very close there in terms of attrition. But um, I got up 15-6 mainly because I was man- managing to hold those objectives uh, and uh, running away with slaves into his very corners of his board so he couldn't catch me. Slaves doing slave things, rock and roll. <laughs> so by this stage, Hugh, you're undefeated. I'm undefeated. Nothing Benson but defeated. Is Lots nothing but. It. Poor fella. Um, coming into round three, so we go up to the next bracket there at 1995. Okay, does luck change? Okay, so I went for a bit more of a um, solid list in this round, uh, these two lists. Basically a whole lot of hordes, Berserker Braves, Breakers, Boomers, Scouts, with um, backed up by a Warlock and Fancy Warlock for some healing and some uh, spell buffs. Uh, but Sammy had Ogres as well with the added bonus of having some angels plus the chariots and again that's just the the speed i can't deal with um we had a nice interesting fight his goblin on a on a wolf versus my goblin on a wolf and they slapped each other for a bit but mine eventually lost out um i tried to do what i can i tried to block him up as much as i could i thought i played okay but it's just too hard to try and outmaneuver that f- flying yeah. character and flying horde. Do you find with that it's a real Achilles heel for them if they've got a lot of hard hitting units that have that are, have higher speed than you because they're yeah. just sort of better at doing what you already do and that they're always going to get the drop on you. It's quite tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I tried to take some uh, um, goblin scouts to try and chaff up just to maybe get that, but it's they're pretty easy to take off. Yeah. It's just very difficult to try and manoeuvre about. So You don't have flying chaff lost. options either. No. Yeah. It's yeah, it's 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 a hard list. So I ended up losing that one again. Uh what was the score on this? Sixteen five to Sammy. Not as much of a resounding defeat at least. No. So I'm starting to get a couple of points now. <laughs> My 1995 list was a little bit of my fun list. So I think I took two trees in this one. Uh, So two big tree herders. At this stage, I was taking on Jeff and his dwarves. Um, So I wasn't very confident with dwarves. I've never had much luck with them. Uh, Lots of our good players across Australia play dwarves. So every time I seem to play them, I get beaten. So I was pleasantly surprised that Jeff had given me a gift in round one. So Jeff, I hope you're listening because I'm going to tell this story again. (laughs) Turn one, he moves both of his berserker heroes behind a hill, right in front, one inch in front of each other. However, Mm -hmm. he moved them inside 20 inches of my Dracon hordes with Vicious that were height three, looking straight over that little hilly. So uh, I obliged in my first turn charged took off the first one overran took off the second one pivoted and now i'm looking at all of his flanks well that's an advantage a a game on uh so pretty much it was those two units that would have shut down my archers that were over that flank as well as my flyers that were over that flank um if he had got the charge off which which he was trying to compete with so uh yeah i got lucky um in that Mm. one there but in Jeff's defense, he didn't give up. He didn't drop his head at all. Uh, so it went right down to the wire and he played the objectives really well. Um, so I ended up winning 15-6. Um, but attrition points sort of got me up that extra couple of points. So. I heard he was crying in the toilets though afterwards. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't an unusual sound. I didn't investigate, but... Oh, well, heals Jeff next time. 
Uh, <laughs> I played <laughs> I played my man Greg Johnson. Uh writes an excellent blog at Hoodling Hole, so go check that out if you want to. He's um, done blog. video battle reports for uh, all the games in this event, amongst many others. Uh yeah, really great dude, Greg. I got on very well with him. It was the first time I'd met him and uh he was playing Kingdoms of Men. Um, we had very similar attrition scores at the end. The same goes for all three of my games so far. Anyway, um, very close games, uh, which makes them really entertaining generally. Um, but I do find that Ratkin pair up actually very poorly against Kingdoms of Men. I find it's uh, quite a tough matchup because they tend to do what Ratkin do, but better. And in, not in all matchups, of course, but in this particular one because... Their infantry are very aggressively costed, as are their monsters. Uh, and you tend to find that you can put not quite so many quality boots on the ground uh, for the Ratkin. Uh, and you're paying things for things like a, an extra movement and rallying and things like that that don't necessarily mm. matter um, all the time. So I uh, had a million pole arms and a bunch of uh, monsters, which you'll see I uh, took inspiration from you know, later on in the cast. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, he uh, managed to eke that uh, out of victory there. Uh, very, very close game, but um, did win. We did, I did run out of time as well, actually, uh, for the f- probably the first time in living memory anyway. I've got close a number of times, but this time I did run out. I was just too busy having fun. So, um, Is that pillage? Yeah, there was a bunch of tokens in the middle. So I think there's three or four objectives in the middle or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Greg collected a lot of tokens in the last turn. Uh, which really helps get him over the line to to seal the seal the deal. So it's sixteen to five to Greg. Well played. Mm-hmm. So as we discussed before, round four was dominate, and I was up against Mister Undead Peter. I was worried again. Three losses already, and then I was facing hordes of infantry, backed up by spellcasters and flying dragon. Um, so <laughs> I couldn't do a whole lot. I can't outmaneuver him because he just covers the board. So I tried to, you know outflank on one side maybe i can crush through and whip around uh so after a couple of turns he managed to get into my back with his dragon and everything of his charged but then everything bounced uh managed to ground his dragon with my um little scouts and hit back and he just kept whiff kept kept whiffing everything and i managed to smash him through dice so he was trying really hard but he just couldn't roll a nerve to, to save him and I eventually ground him down. Um, my fancy braves got buff with one of the warlocks, and they just can't kind of chewed through everything. So I was happy about that. But I didn't feel like I outplayed him. I just kind of stood there and threw dice at him, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that was my first win for the day. It wasn't a huge win, 15-6 to me. But it was something. Nice. It was more than nothing. Victory. Thank you, Last. Peter. You made me feel good okay. <laughs> at the end of the day. So uh, at this stage, I'm three games up. I'm quietly confident. Somehow my fluffy two tree list won the last game. And then Greg Johnson with his uh, Kingdoms of Men. So it turns mm. out just Hugh and I just swapped opponents pretty much the whole time. So, yeah, we just <laughs> constantly hovered around the same points and just kept dodging each other. It's what we do in events. It's a, it's a long-standing <laughs> tradition. So like I... We have never played each other in a tournament yet. No. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so uh, Greg and I have been playing against each other since 2007, I think. Um, so we've got a long, long history of gaming together. That's um, at least four years. That's at least four years, give or take. And uh, I was pretty, pretty comfortable where I deployed um, until the game started. And then I realized that my army was totally, grossly outnumbered. And yep. I, I suffered from not protecting a flank by using the board edge. So I effectively let uh, Greg just sort of wrap around me. So this one here cascaded extremely quickly. Had a couple of low nerve rolls when I needed uh, high nerve rolls. Uh, had a blood boil. I think I did 14 wounds on one of his uh, regiments and then blood boiled and then it didn't didn't get rid of the unit. So just Did it stuff... make your blood boil? It did. It did. Actually, if, if you've ever played Greg, you cannot get grumpy. Uh, <laughs> no. it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, got a little bit unlucky, but at, overall, uh, I would say that Greg really capitalized on every one of those bits of luck that didn't quite go my way and uh in the end he just sort of wrapped it up really really nicely and just folded around even my trees 
uh, they just couldn't deal with it all. So in the end, uh, it was a 21 loss for me. I could only... Ooh, that was a, a destroyation. So my confidence at the end of day one just went straight down into the, the beard. So a 21 loss there to Greg on the end of day one. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Good play, good play. I, I What I wanted to mention here quickly was that of my three lists... And I think, I'm not sure if all of us, but certainly Selick and I were talking about it and we felt the same way, that this list was the weakest, the 1995. I was trying to take, um, I was trying to take the advice of our, uh, of our uh, Jedi Master in when he said that I need to, um, Tracy, this is Tracy. obviously, yep. yeah, I, I need to try to take lists that are to fight the scenario, so to speak. And I think I did a pretty good job of that in the 1495 and the 2250, insofar as you could with the 2250 anyway. Um, but the 1995, I probably took it on board a little bit too much and tried to go for a really defensive build, a bit similar to what Benson described. And for mm. once in my life, mainly for the for the sake of the flexibility, ever since I've got him, I think this is the only games I've played without my Demon Lord. And I really felt the loss of him the entire, for both these games. Uh, and I really think uh, I probably could have done a better job of making this particular list. I was trying to be a bit too off the wall, I think. Um, also, didn't take Blizzard. Major mistake. Um, <laughs> I, I put that on my notepad and everything. So, this game <laughs> I played against John Healy, who's a lovely bloke playing Dorfs. Uh, I think I'd met him at some point in the past, different event or whatever. Um, this game was, I'll, I'll be honest, it was a bit of a frustrating one. And also, fourth game of the day, I think I was getting a bit tired and a little little bit of saltiness crept into my game in this game, I've got to admit. <laughs> um, I, you know, not as badly as perhaps uh, I remember it, but in any case, uh, it was it was a tr- difficult game because I don't think I have rolled my way into a loss as badly as I did in this game for a long, long time. To be fair, I think I was due it. It had been a long time prior to this since I had a game where I felt like I just straight up lost because of the dice and I haven't had a game since that's been that way. So so you've got to have one of those games every now and again, I suppose. And like the, mm-hmm. the deciding factor here is I, I kind of outwrapped his dwarf army. Um, an example of my dice like that just seemed to be consistently poor when they really mattered, mainly for nerve rolls. And not necessarily outside of that, but you know, as as we all know, those are the important roles. But um, like his organ gun would fire into my horde in cover and do like seven wounds and then wave at them, and I'd be like, <laughs> oh. and and then the the <laughs> this bloody horde that was in range of his organ gun to charge got wavered three turns in a row before finally getting killed. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not meant to happen. <laughs> um, but that, 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 kind of, that kind of business on that flank didn't even really matter because of goddamn Irnaeus. This is the goddamn Irnaeus game. So um, my, flank, my flank that was coming around to basically wipe his army out, more or less, with my stompiest, nastiest units, uh, including my tunnel runners, just could not kill Irnaeus. I got him down to... I needed a five to kill him the first time after a very poor roll uh, charging him with the tunnel runners that should do around like 10, 12 wounds on average. Um, They only did like, you know, seven or whatever it is. So they needed a five to get him. Didn't get the five. Uh, Then proceeded (laughs) to double one him in the next turn, which meant that the the flank was completely clogged up. It didn't really particularly matter in this case because it's a single guy that he could charge back and do a bit of damage, although that was also painful and annoying. But I double one him so then I couldn't get past the tunnel runners or anyone else on that flank, if you can imagine, because they're all clogged up. And then in the next turn, I double one him again. And I was like, well, I guess I should just give up then. <laughs> so, so I managed to pull 500 points a bit out of salty. that game. <laughs> I'm salty even in the retelling, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just telling it with the, the salt that Anais caused me. I did finally get him in the last turn, mainly out of spite, from what I recall. I like, uh, he, he'd gotten, gotten away from my combat units at that point, and I just burned him off with my stick-burning guy because he was on like 20 bloody wounds or whatever. I'm like, have some of that, you bastard. Aubergine got in there and lit him up with his flaming stick. So that gave me a bit of moral victory. But by that point, it was too late. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, the sodium intake was just too high. You just couldn't counter it. Sodium tank was way too high. I tasted like, you know, I started out as a delicious steak and by the end of the game, I was a goddamn anchovy. I was that salty. Oh, God. <laughs> so uh, John, John got up. Uh, full credit to him for taking advantage of my poor luck. 
Uh, but he was able to just take my army <laughs> piecemeal down because Man. basically one figure who isn't even a particularly good figure held up every unit that mattered for the whole game. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> GG, John. And so oh. that, that concluded the first day. So that was yes. two of our 1495s, two of our 1995s, and day one was done. Uh, so we, we woke up the next morning, we all came back in, and I was like, who did Hugh fight last? It was John Healy, so I'm going to fight him. Uh, so, jeez, it seems to be the way it goes. But uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this one here was a bit of a cagey game, uh, so it went right down to the wire. It was a 10-10 draw. Um, I sort of had him on the ropes there. I had more attrition uh, through that period, but just couldn't roll him off his last couple of units uh, in turn seven, I think we went to. So, uh, yeah, he played quite well to get that 10-10 draw off me with my elves. This was my strongest list, I would say. Nice. How about you, Benson? Okay, so I suppose we can just kind of combine this, can't we, Hugh? Because I was facing off against you. Yeah, yeah, it was a shame to face off against such a big jerk on my <laughs> round. <laughs> <laughs> and Selick so can confirm I was stewing over my 2250 list because of three losses the previous day. I just kind of concluded that I needed a bit more speed, so I added a flying captain. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to add in, keep some fun in there, so Grikagamok was there, Namagarok, and just some hordes for them to help out. And I think the flying captain was the clincher in this particular game. Yeah, he was I don't great. know about you. Um, but I was, your demon came in and kind of got held up for a little while, mm -hmm. um, just trying to chew through some things and didn't do a whole lot until the end of the game. But he did survive, if I recall, until... Old mate, yeah, just sort of some work. I think him. he got the boomers and a giant or something, mm. and so not too shabby. But that flying captain was able to skirt around out of sight for a couple of turns until he can get into position. Mm. And his biggest achievement being able to rear charge your tunnel runners and take them off in the one turn. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty good. And you loved my boomers as well. My first boomer ran up and uh, managed to knock waver three or four units. Waver three or four units in one shot. Yeah, so he <laughs> took took off something, I, I believe, and a couple of characters ended up wavering as well. Right, um, I don't, I don't actually one, remember this game six. that well. I've blocked it out to some extent. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, what you, what I do remember with the flying captain is that you had a chance to charge the, um, you had the uh, claw, claw shots. shots. And I was really hoping you would because uh, what, what a lot of people make that mistake of getting into my back lines and then going, I'm going to waste a turn or two charging these claw shots with my big nasty nasty guy. And they're only 90 points. And I don't really care if they die. Mm. So I was uh, hoping you'd do that. And you definitely considered it but then chose not to, which was a wise choice. And I think um, that decision, which then, of course, proceeded to like dice off the tunnel runners, uh, ended up being <laughs> quite, a, quite a good choice. Um, mm. But no, the uh, streak continues. I can never beat Ben. I've never mm -hmm. beaten Ben, even though everyone else on the tournament scene seems to be able to do it. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> haven't managed to to beat the old Ben Rantel. So um, yeah, pretty pretty close game from it, what I recall. Very it, close game. It was yeah, a draw was in 10 -10. the end. Ten ten. There were thirty five points difference in the uh, in the uh, attrition points, so it must have been very close. Yep. Yeah. There you go. So all three of us there got draws in that that la or the first round of day two. Indeed. Mm. So we went into day six. Ben, so I'll probably hand over. Felt like day six. Round six. Round six. <laughs> day six for Ben. Uh, so that was a kill scenario in round five. Round six, we had control. Okay, what have we got up against Tim Stewart? Uh, what was he rocking? Tim was rocking the orcs. Orcs. That's right. This. Oh, cool. I've never played Yeah, it. I didn't know what I was going to do against this time, just because there were um, a bunch of hordes, and then he had, I think he had three flying monsters with characters. Um, ancient Slashes, are they called? Winged Slashes? Yeah. Yep. And a couple of giants, or maybe one or two giants? I don't know. But there were three bloody monsters that I had to try and deal with that would could outflank me, and then I've got hordes in the front as well. Nasty. Backed up with war drums, so... I shot one horde off with my boomers over a couple of turns. He charged me with his flying thingies. But because I took rallying in this 2250... Oh, that rallying that was huge of, against me too. I remember how it almost massive. broke you a number of times, except rallying mm. pips. Yeah, so that was a good choice. So he came close, but not enough to um, stop them. And so I was able to hit back and kind of grounded 
the dragons for a good while and eventually taking them off. Um, a giant into the side, Grokagamok into the side kills things, but a double one will also prevent that. So I think he had like 20 something wounds on one of the, the dragon, the flying dragons, and double one that. So that was fun. And it just couldn't really ground out the hordes. Um, I'm, I know I made a couple of silly mistakes at the end, but I was getting tired and mm. I just wanted it over. Um, so I, I probably could have made it a bit closer, but I didn't. And it ended up being a 17 4 win to Tim. Very close game until right at the end. I think it was a turn seven as well. Like I was, it was oh, right. draw or might have been a slight win to me at turn six. And then the seven kind of pushed him over the edge to, to finish everything up. Looks like another bloodbath there. So yeah, you got 13 55 attrition it points. Was that last turn seven where he could clean everything up. Hmm. So, I took on AG, or Andrew Goodman, so one of Victoria's better players over here. So he was taking a Bissell Dwarf, so he actually beat Greg Johnson in uh, the first day of round five as well. So he sort of battled there at the top, and I, hopefully AG's listening to this, because uh, I reckon for the first time, <laughs> once again in 12 years, I outplayed him. Oh. No. I'm going to say it. It's a big call. So in one round, I think it was round four or five, I had all of his big grotesque hordes with multiple wounds on them and every single one of them I rolled a waiver instead of a break. Um, And if you've ever played Abyssal Dwarves, particularly AG's list in uh, his 225O list, was pretty strong, I would say. Um, And he just had the tools to stop them getting that second test uh, or that that final test. Um, So all I needed to do was roll better on those three units on that one turn or at least one of them uh, to be able to get them to get off the board. But as you know, Grotesque, that next round, he got... Yep, he just tied up Basusu in the flank of my archers to stop them from shooting, uh, shut down all of my individuals, uh, even with big units. And in the end... um, they just regen all of those wounds back. Um, <laughs> but by that stage, they were too close. They got into my archers. So uh, it was still managed to make a game of it. Um, in fact, I got a draw out of this one, which is great if mm-hmm. you've ever played AG. Um, but with all of that um, attrition points that he got, it ended up being a draw, but an negative 11... Draw. Oh, a negative draw. An 11-9 draw to me, well, against me. Mm. But pretty. I was spewing on that one. Uh but that's, that's the way it, the, the cookie grows. All you need is that little bit more luck in that turn and then it would have uh, snowballed yeah. from there. Well, I, I played my man Yan, uh, which is always Yan good fun. man. Yan man. He is a lovely bloke who was playing Empire of Dust uh, and we've had... Uh, I think this was our second game, but we've actually played since as well. Uh, he's a good fun player to play against. I really enjoy playing him. Uh, although we both are... Very thinky on the manoeuvres, I suppose you'd say. Uh, he and I both suffer from this a little bit, where we stuff around too long trying to make manoeuvre decisions um, mm-hmm. and end up running really tight on the clock. So this was another one of those games. Um, and Yan, uh, it was such a good game, this game. It was just really, really close all the way through. There were mom- there were moments where I thought I was up and then I was thought he was up and then I thought I was up and back and forth. Uh, so it felt really, really close. And then right in the last uh, turn, I managed to just eke out the win, basically. Like I snuck into the objective situations more than anything else uh, because Yan did end up a bit... He was about 300 ahead on attrition, um, but I still got up 16... 16-6? 16, Is that even possible? Shouldn't it be 16-5? Mm-hmm. It says sixteen six in the in the <laughs> in the tournament recording. So I uh, just gave Yan an extra point there, just because I was feeling generous, I suppose. So uh, good on you, Yan. I think m- maybe it was meant to be fourteen seven, uh, fifteen six. Fi- yeah, fifteen six. Who knows? <laughs> maybe it I got close like that. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. It was a good game. Um, yeah, yeah. Yan uh, sort of won the grind as Empire of Dust is so good at doing slightly on the on the attrition points, but. Uh, as is my ratty way, I got ahead on the objectives. Mm. Name of the game. All right. Last round. Last round. You're on your last legs, I think, as well. Hey, did I have legs still? Um, okay, I was up against Yanzi Man, Yan Man. Um, now, 
He was... We, we were talking about chess clocks. And last game of the tournament, I was feeling a bit lenient. He is, can feel a bit under the pressure with the clock. I don't mind the clock. I think they're fine. I can work well with it. Mm-hmm. So we decided to not play with it. I think that was my biggest mistake here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it felt like there wasn't much I could do with this game either. Um, again, just out... He just uh, His speed was so much better than uh, mine with his flying characters, flying monsters, his chariots, and with Surge as well. Mm-hmm. So I kind of eked a little bit of damage here and there, stood forward a little bit, but eventually got charged by things. It was a really scary army. He had the, the, ch- the chariots, the flying pharaoh, and the, mm. bone, the flying bone the dragon. The dragon thing. Uh, yeah. Lots of speed, and then also with the bone giant and the uh, casket as well, mm. hold up the center. And Scary. N- nothing against Yu Yan, but it's probably one of the most boring games I've played, just because there wasn't much I could do. So I probably spent ten, maybe fifteen minutes of the actual match doing something, because I didn't have much choice. I'd move forward or counter charge, and then Yan was able to finagle his way th- around with all his maneuverings and beat me up and then it would be my turn I'll just counter charge move a little bit if I could and then back to him mm. um, so next time Yan we're playing with the clock <laughs> that was a 17-4 victory to Yan and that was the end of my my tournament life I think <laughs> <laughs> for this one so I had heard that uh, Tim Stewart had beaten Ben so I was like alright I gotta play Tim this is Orc guy Orc Tim yeah, yeah. Orc guy so Ended up playing him, and uh, once again, the memory's a little bit loose here, but uh, pretty sure I weakened up most of his units with some ranged attacks, and then charging him with uh, Dracon Riders, with uh, Elite, obviously, and Vicious. I was just taking off units pretty consistently, um, and then in the, the final two turns, I just sort of went for the objective. So ended up winning an 18-3 in the final, uh, final the seventh round. Um, so that was pretty good. I think I got pretty much all of his army there. So I'm not sure how I got 25 points left over, but I did. <laughs> how did you get more points in attrition than he had available? Ah, one of the units were worth more, weren't they? Yes, Oh, that's, that's true. right, yeah, double points. That, yeah, wait, that that's, that's, there we go. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand, according to um, Tabletop T.O., how Andrew Goodman yes. could get 25,000 gonna... attrition points. <laughs> <I was just laughs> that. Andrew Goodman beat Sammy 21 zip and got 25,300 attrition points, which is 10 <laughs> times the size of his army. So AG clearly uh, getting a little trigger happy with the old pen there, or more likely the uh, scores, putting in the scores. What's in a decibel, is yeah, it? What's right. in a... <laughs> hey, it wasn't on the tournament points, it was just the attrition points, so... But that put his uh, his total attrition points for the tournament at thirty four thousand three hundred ninety five. Mm, stri- strictly a great <laughs> deal more than it was possible to get. There you go. Mm. Uh, I played uh, the other Tim in this last round, so I did all right. Um, I I played uh, the other Tim, so Tim Huggins, uh, who was cracking around with whatever they call dark elves these days. Twilight kin. Twilight kin, of course. Um, so he was playing a really cool army, I thought. Lots of witch elves and uh, things that are very deceptive, which are the witch elves on mounts, who are actually uber super heavy cavalry rather than light wussy <laughs> cavalry as they appear. Um, luckily, I was wise to that trick because Spoon does almost exactly the same thing in his demon army. So I knew what was up with those heavy cavalry and those are the ones I nominated to be worth double points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I charged him with Demon on turn one, I think, and uh, didn't kill him right away, but did did get through them. I think I wavered him twice before I took him off, so uh, it was, I don't know, debatably a little lucky on on that part there, I reckon, but uh, had a great game against Tim, uh, roasted the living daylights out of his uh, near-naked ladies with lots of um, uh, War Machine fire from my breath weapon and uh, also good old uh, Aubergine on with Burning Stick. Did a mm-hmm. shitload of work this game. I think he took out uh, three troops of Witch Elves or something, which is similar to, <laughs> to your previous uh, That's what I did in the first, victory the with the game, Goblin yeah. Flaming guy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, really good game. The enormous size of the Chariot Horde base... 
was uh, a really telling and important factor in this game because it really clogged up his guys when he charged in the middle. I deliberately gave him a flank, which is not something I'll do very often, and just mm-hmm. said, this unit can die. I don't give a, if the chariots go in, it'll be really good for me. Um, and he actually charged uh, and took out the unit, as you'd expect. But then because the base was so enormous, he couldn't rotate it uh, in any mm. useful way. So I was able to hit the chariot in the flank and then at the same time it held up quite a bit of his army. So that ended up being a really important factor as well. Uh, But I was getting a bit lucky this game. I was doing things like doing like two wounds to um, his sorceress and then just taking them off. But Stickman, Stickman, who is of course uh, the Blight blight Lord, who is a very poxy melee combatant. He's got four attacks, four plus to hit and crushing a, one. <laughs> he's a very poxy mage as well because I don't think I've ever seen him successfully cast okay. this spell. On paper, he's a mage with slightly <laughs> better combat attacks. Uh, in reality, he is a dude with a stick and he knows how to use it, my man. He, he, he's got his internet certificate in wizardry. He sure does. <laughs> he would, every Once a game, traditionally, he would try to cast Banechant 3 and fail and then <laughs> try to cast Critter's Call and do zero wounds. Which was my anti-giant thing, courtesy of our uh, Jedi Master. But um, it's anti-flyer, sorry, to prevent dragons. Uh, never worked, though, despite me talking it up before the event. I was like, yep, this is going to be great. But he just fluffed it every time. He'd get like two hits and then no wounds. I'd be like, damn it! But then he'd go in with his stick and just make me smile every time. He took out two sorceresses this game and uh, contributed Jeez. to the demise of several other units, all with his trusty stick who needs magic so that was a 20 to 1 for me that game that last round uh there was three really really big wins so greg johnson so who only lost one game to ag had won mm. 21 a- ag actually beat sammy for sammy's second time a 21 zip mm-hmm. um and hugh obviously with his 21 so when we have a look at the final standings after the the two days and the seven rounds uh Greg Johnson, the one that uh, defeated Hugh and I, got first. AG, the one that defeated me, got second. I managed to scrape in a third with my little submarine. Uh, And Hugh's 21 finish gets him up to fourth. Uh, Then we sort of slide all the way down there to Ben. This is is a ridiculous thing. How do I get 13th out of 12 people? <laughs> I don't know. It really just it sums up your tournament, though, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it really does, you poor soul. Didn't go super well. So, <sighs> so when you said uh, that Hammer Four was a smaller tournament, actually, this this was uh, I think you meant a shorter tournament. It was a one day shorter. Um, shorter. Mm. Yep. Well, as this longer tournament didn't pull as good a crowd, we only ended up with it was actually twelve players in the end. Um, yeah. Because Mike Crossman didn't attend uh, reportedly because he found out he was the thirteenth man and didn't want to cause a buy, uh, which mm. is typical Mike, just too much of a Classic. good bloke for his own good. Doesn't turn up, still beats me. <laughs> <laughs> also typical Mike. <laughs> mm. So just before we go on a little bit of a break, um, it is worth noting that uh, Convic is obviously one of our bigger tournaments usually. Um, we did have quite a few gaming groups. I think there was one that was over in Scotland for a wedding um, and a couple of other things that were happening on this this period of time. So the numbers were significantly shorter than normal. Mm. Um, so if you do get a chance, it's usually around that July school holidays over in Australia, down in Melbourne, in Victoria. Just pencil it in right now. Yeah, I'd never actually been before, but I would encourage anyone to come. It's a fantastic event. It's not often you get to try Super that, relaxed. That, that multi-different points kind of level, which makes it really interesting. And uh, yeah, really, really well run. Very smooth event. So... Despite its small size, it was still really, really super fun. So if it was bigger, it'd just be even better. And I'm sure uh, we'll see it increase in size next year. Hmm. For sure. So with that, we'll take a little bit of a break and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. 
Return from the break. Uh, what have we got next? Another tournament? Yes, uh, it's going to be Hammerfall. So this one here was a more recent tournament for us. So it was a fifteen hundred four round one day tournament, um, and unfortunately, Bensom, despite really really wanting to attend this one, couldn't yeah. attend. I mean, you practiced and everything, and I paid my monies, and I was all keen to go, mm. and then had an unfortunate dog biting incident, which landed me in hospital for a bit and on antibiotic drip which means I couldn't make it out of my home to get there. Yeah, very unfortunate uh, mm. mishap, to say the least. So just to yes. be explicitly clear, uh, the dog bit Benson, not Benson biting the dog. Yep, yep. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> he didn't go to a Chinese restaurant, eat some bad dog, and then have to go on antibiotics. <laughs> no, no, so it bit me on the face that it got infected, which is why I had to go to the hospital. But I'm okay, so we move on. We do. Okay, so what's Hammer for? So it was a one-day tournament, four games, as we said. Uh, what was the point limit? It was 1,500, was it? Yeah, 1,500 on the nose. Okay, so that, so different to Convict, where it was 1,495, you could then take multiples of two of something for mm-hmm. your heroes and machines and all that jazz. Um, so this was where? In Ringwood? House, House of yeah, War? Yeah, House of War, over in Ringwood in Melbourne once again. Um, And this one here, the only real major difference other than uh, the scaling of Convict is we didn't know the scenarios in advance. So we couldn't uh, take on the Jedi Master's advice and really tailor our armies for uh, the scenarios. Yes, had to take an all-comers army. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Plebs army, if you will. So me being original, I took the elves. You never take elves, but uh, did did you take the spears with plus one to hit? I did. Did you take the archers with the piercing? Yep. Did you take a dragon? Yep. Did you take a you take a horde of dracons? I did with vicious. I think. We just write his yeah. list for him. We know it. Well, other okay. than the spears, though, the, the, those other three units, it's like I'm pretty sure the Alpha Army book just says one of each of those, doesn't it? And then after that, you pick your last 500 points as you see fit. Unfortunately, because of my absence, getting the Ratkin army, which I was, which I'm holding to kind of fix up a bit. Um, we couldn't do it, so you had to play with a different army. What did you take? Yeah, from? yeah. On account of the uh, tragic face biting incident, uh, mm. I was ratless, so I had to pivot and be agile uh, at the last minute. And mm-hmm. um, I requested to borrow an army from Mr. Crossman himself, the TO, uh, which he very generously lent me. So I borrowed Kingdoms of Men, and I thought, now what army has kicked my ass recently? So then I wrote a list uh, which was basically heaps of pole arms and monsters, which is what uh, what Greg what took, Greg took. <laughs> to the last... Because, uh, you know, this is like the day before the event. So it's not like I had a lot of Good time strategy, to think about yeah. this. Uh, so this was Greg, uh, what Greg actually won Convict. I don't know if we said that before. I think, did you sell it? The, yep. that yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I assumed that uh, if if Greg can win with it, then anyone can, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Greg. I know you're a good player. Uh, it turns out better than me, but uh, spoiler alert. There you go. So I took two giants, uh, two flying okay. flappy birds of doom, uh, which is pretty scary at 1750, even though they're not like individually super powerful. Uh, and then just basically heaps of pole arms, a couple of hordes, a few regiments. Where you go? At 1500, not 1750. Uh, 17. Which makes them even Did more dangerous. Cheat? Maybe. Was it 1,500? Oh, 250 points is pretty big. <laughs> oh, no, no, it was 1,500. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Of course it was. The next event he's running is 1,750, possibly. That's uh-huh. right. Yep. Yes. It's easy to get confused with Mike's events because he runs so damn many of them. What a legend. Anyway, yeah. Oh, and a Beast of War as well because more monsters. Anyway. So, my first round was up against Paul. Um, so Paul, it was, I think it was his second tournament, maybe. He's played a couple of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, lovely young chap. Um, so he was playing with his Kingdoms of Men, which uh, I was pretty familiar with. Um, but it was more of a learning game, to be perfectly honest. Uh, 
So I really wanted to encourage Paul to keep playing. Um, so we played it all through and I helped him out at a couple of pivots and things like that that um, I normally wouldn't. However, Paul took it all in his stride, uh, sort of learnt a lot from of his mistakes um, that we sort of talked through as well. Um, ended up being a 16-4 win uh, for me. Um, but yeah, keep going, mm-hmm. Paul. I know that uh, your wizard was extremely unlucky. That poor fella tried to use his lightning bolt in all six turns, rolling three dice, just could not roll fours. This is using blackjack? This is using blackjack as well, yep. Okay. So I'm not sure how there was a 16-4. Uh Magic? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Six, six, <laughs> it would happen with blackjack every now and again. It's like people nah, just it, feel like it should add up to 20 and then it <laughs> somehow it does. <laughs> nah, it would have been a 16-5. I'm just recording it wrong here. And Hugh, the first game with the, the men. Uh, yes, uh, first game I played against Jason with his Night Stalkers. Oh, sorry, my beautiful wife has just delivered me a delicious Milo. So I'm going to have Hello. a sip of that. Ooh, mm, such a beverage. Uh, thank you, darling. Now, um, what did I do? I played Jason, um, who is uh, a lovely bloke from not sure where, but not... Bendigo. Bendigo. Oh, right. Cool. So he was part of the Bendigo crew. Uh, we, we were chatting a bit before the event, and then I happened to draw him round one, which was cool. He was playing a really cool Night Stalkers army. Very simple, uh, but effective paint job, and just uh, these creepy tentacle beasts left and right from the Cthulhu range as a lot of his monsters. So very memorable uh, mm-hmm. little army, actually, I thought. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hadn't played Night Stalkers before, so it was interesting to play against uh, all stealth army. Luckily, brought bugger all shooting. I think I had a troop of archers, and that was about it. Uh, but uh, I did manage to sort of lure Jason in, and he, he went in a little piecemeal, uh, which we talked a bit about it after the game, and... Um, yeah, it was it was probably a, f- a few choices that could have gone another way to just try to be more impactful. But he was very cautious with a couple of his important high cost units, including his flying nasty demon lord beastie, uh, and that basically led to me being able to take out his units piecemeal um, and sort of you know one guy'd come in and I'd envelop him and then rinse and repeat. Mm. Uh, so. Mm. Uh, managed to win this one quite handily. Uh, I think it was a 21 zip. I got all the... 20, uh, 20 dash one. 20 yeah, to one, yeah. was it? Okay, yep. fantastic. Yep. So we managed to break a, another point back there somehow, perhaps attrition or whatever. Everyone's hey. a winner. All right, so I managed to get up against Jason. Lovely bloke. Um, definitely learning the game in a tournament environment. He said he'd only ever had one opponent before. He'd been playing for a while, but just always against the same guy. So I think... Um, I hope he was encouraged to come back to more of a, tournaments because uh, a very pleasant player to, to play against for sure mm. yeah I, was, I didn't mm-hmm. play him this tournament but I hopefully can draw him in another tournament so my round two was against Glenn now arguably another Bendigo another, I think he's Bendigo uh, but this one here yep. was the Brock list it had in 1500 you could obviously take multiple units and uh, Glenn did so he took I, I want to say Five hordes Many. of Brocks. What? Uh, yeah, there was a lot of Brocks. Um, I think it was five <laughs> units. And then he had a couple of troops of Brocks. Um, so it, there was Brocks everywhere. Was it all the Badger figures? Were they full full yeah. regiments or troops? Uh, That's so reg- uh, regiments. So we, I think he had like five overall. Uh, and I think it was four regiments. Of Brocks and then a couple of troops, two troops. So <laughs> it was a lot. So <laughs> there was a, a lot of dash 22 guys. So uh, I took it all in my stride. I'm like, hey, look, at least they're defense four. I've got my shooting, my spears. Who cares when you dash 22? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I, thought I was in a pretty good position. Down. I was in a pretty good position. I moved up my, uh, my dragon here, shot, starting to really cripple some of them with my shooting. Um, managed to get my charge off. I think it was round two. I got the charge off from my dragon into an unsupported unit, a big regiment of them at the back. And I'm like, all right, I've got three rounds that I sort of math hammered it. I know it doesn't work. This is, you'll you'll (laughs) find it very shortly. It was based on something. Uh, So I charged in and I I, I did a shit round uh, and then a poor round. Then uh, <laughs> then second round, I did much better. Third round, I did much better. And I needed a four 
to waver, I rolled a three. So I was like, damn it. All right, so by mm. this stage, the rest of the army is starting to sort itself out, and he's starting to turn some of his uh, organ guns. He had two organ guns, of course, and um, started to turn those around to me. So I knew that I had one turn that I could probably get out of there. And uh, so I did another eight wounds, needed snake eyes, and you betcha. You betcha bottom dollar. <laughs> I rolled snake eyes and I stayed there once again. He was sitting on like 26 wounds or something. And uh, by that stage, all he... <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Knocked me over with a feather. Uh, the flame and galah uh, moved, shuffled his guys that, were wa- uh, that weren't wavered anymore, shuffled them aside, uh, used his horde of shooters. What's the dwarven shooters, mate, with handguns? Uh, on watch rifles. Yes. Uh, so he had a big horde of those that were sitting over on one flank and uh, just managed to shoot the organ gun and shoot those rifles into my dragon and took him off. So that meant that I had... Uh, that is that... A, that's a tough list. All those brocks and then you got a 20 attack piercing two yeah. horde of, of gunners. Yeah, so in the end, I was in an amazing position. This was a dominate uh, round. So I had my archers now inside 12. I remember I had my spears inside 12. So I I had him. I'd cleaned up my spears, took out a couple of units there. They were happy days. All I needed was that dash 22 unit at the back to get out, to die. And uh, if they died, my archers could have shot a troop of you wouldn't guess but uh they were also the badgers um and if i shot them they would have been taken off in one turn i get the scenario uh with two hordes in the center Mm. however because i couldn't do that i had to shoot the ones that were on 26 wounds managed to take those off however i had to sacrifice my spears they were obviously going to cop it they couldn't uh, survive anymore so they died but I'm still up. I've still got my horde of archers in there. They're scoring. They've got two wounds on them. And I'm like, all right, I should be pretty good to hold on for a draw. Mm. However, dice. So. Math hammer doesn't work. <laughs> organ gun comes in, shoots, takes off a couple of wounds. Um, I do believe he shoots something else into me. I want to say magic. Uh, then blood boils Probably felt me. Like magic. Yeah, blood boils me. Uh, needs an eleven, and he rolls it. Yep. So yeah, so blood boil uh, just took me off. It rolled like a mad snake, um, and and yeah, mad snakes um, roll really well, exceptionally well. If you've ever met a mad <laughs> snake, great rollers. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the end, he, I went from two hordes in next turn, no hordes in from two wounds to dead. Sad face. Good job. <laughs> yeah, if. If that was anything other than a horde of elven archers with piercing, I would feel so sorry for you, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fair call. But in the end, that was that was probably my, my longest uh, game, as in talking-wise. So that one there, I ended up losing 5 Yeah, fair 16. enough. This, is, this was your Erneus game. And uh, against that Brock list, sounds like you, you got Brocked. But it also sounds like yeah. Uh, yeah, you really got rolled off, which is uh, quite unfortunate. You get That's one it, of them, but he game. only had one troop left. I killed all the other Brocks. Nice. So he had a, he had an organ gun, that horde of uh, shooters, uh, shooters, whatever they are, and um, the rifles, the rifles, and that was it. Nice, nice. Mm. Well, in my round two, I played Jeffrey, so uh, one of the TOs at uh, for Convic, uh, Jeff yep. Holland. And uh, Jeff was playing Night Stalkers, who I had played before because I played them in the last round. Um, Mm. I wasn't as confident this time around on account of the fact that I know that Jeff is a bit of a cut snake himself. So, uh, and not not one of the rolling (laughs) kind, one of the biting kind. So, he he had a nasty list, which I believe he'd borrowed from AG. So, you know it's going to be nasty. (laughs) <laughs> and yep. uh, AG does not come with a knife to any gunfights that's for damn sure so uh, <laughs> it, it was a uh, really really good game actually really enjoyable one thing that um, that uh, Jeff did take which I imagine is is his innovation uh, rather than AG's but he took uh, 
unit of hounds with the crystal pendant, which I thought was really cool. Uh, didn't do that much this game, though. I was able to mitigate it, really. I sort of baited them into charging a birdie mm. in the forest, and then they didn't do any damage, and I hit him in the flank with a giant and took him off. The giant took, like, you know, about five wounds or something from the crystal pendant, so not the end of the world, really. Right. Um, but it is scary. When you've got one of those units charging you in the face... Um, yeah, it's it's the first time I'd played against Crystal Pendant in a very long time, and it just inspired me to take it in mm. list. I've got to start putting that in list. I, I know it's fifty points, but it's it's like a boom it's wagon. It's like a boom wagon, but not as cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, I uh, had a really we had this really cagey game, very standoffish. Both of us were like, we knew that whoever advanced first was going to get charged by the other army and really um, eaten up to for breakfast. Um, and slowly but surely, I think Jeff got the slight upper hand in the manoeuvring game and uh, was looking like winning. But I had probably three opportunities altogether to take off one of his hordes. Um, look, I couldn't tell you what horde they are, but there's some sort of night stalkery, nasty, monstery, cavalry, something or other. Some sort of gribbly beast. Mm-hmm. Fiends, maybe? Could have been fiends, honestly. I don't know what they're called. But they're, they're fast. They're cavalry. They're fast. They hit pretty hard, um, and they have. I, I believe they have regen. Uh, they may not have regen. I don't. Re- I don't recall. But well, the bit that mattered is uh, <laughs> the gribbly Cthulhu type character who sort of chills at the back and has heaps of healing. He's a really mm. weird character. He's got like all the rules in the game. He's got like a pathfinder, nimble inspiring like you know you know all the rules in in um, mm. kings of war he's got he's, he's got, got all of them yep. yeah yep. um and includes includes heal seven i believe and jeff was okay. not rolling well or or badly throughout the game except for these heal rolls these heals rolls were really good a number of times he would be like okay they've got five wounds on it oh heal seven heal five or heal six out of seven or whatever uh, and just kept taking those heals off and that really made him win that attrition war in the end I two I had three opportunities as I said to take out a really important horde which would have put me a little bit ahead in that center engagement where we're trying to get the most unit strength in the center um, mm-hmm. and it then would have meant that other units that would not have died on account of this horde still existing uh, <laughs> which would have would have definitely helped but each time I couldn't quite get it. I, I needed kind of a little bit over average, you, you could probably say, to get him off. Each time didn't quite get it, and then he would heal it right back up to almost completely unwounded, uh, which mm. is always pretty demoralizing in Kings of War. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the end, Jeff got up by a fairly small margin, um, but man, it was close. It was such a good game, really, really good game. And Jeff did deserve to win. He, I think he did... Uh, very narrowly outplay me, but I certainly gave him plenty of opportunities to make a mistake, and he just didn't really make one. So, f- full cr- power right. to him. Well played, Jess. So for round three, uh, we had I took on Dave uh, with his undead um, in the plunder scenario. So this one here, we went back and forth a fair bit. Um, I don't actually have the final wash up of this one, however. Um, I just off memory, I think it was about a sixteen five win my way. Um, it may have been slightly higher. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it sort of went back and forth. But uh, in the end, it was all about me having the tokens and he just couldn't quite get them back. He was he tried to get the tokens too quickly and I was able to sort of counter and then knock the tokens off, off those units that got into weird positions to get them. So mm-hmm. that was sort of how we, we worked out on this one. Um, he had one unit that was way up the back that was uh, causing me a lot of grief just with the range, but... In the end, I just sort of stayed inside the the terrain that was available and uh, took the win. Nice. Now, I I don't think we've mentioned, but the difference between this low point game tournament and Convict were, I think, the biggest thing is the table sizes. Hmm, so in Convict, yes. we were by four by uh, yeah four by fours, but yep. at Hammerfall, it's six by fours. So you got a lot more air space to move. Mm, certainly did matters. You, did, At this did points level, that is, that? convict like uh, increases table size as you go up in points. Well, mm. I think we'll we'll touch on that right at the very end. But a really okay. good observation. So basically, what what Benson's saying is, in the fourteen ninety five at convict, it was a four by four. In this tournament in Hammerfall, it was fifteen hundred, so only five more points, but a six by four. Yeah, mm. I think so four we'll, by four is we'll, too we'll small for fourteen. 
1500 ish. I guess my game is next. Uh, it was me versus Dan, uh, a bloke who had a very beautifully painted army. They were elves. Um, Benson, can you please tell me what his list was? Horde of archers. Probably got a yep. horde of spears with plus one D. <laughs> it's probably got a dragon. <laughs> it's probably got dracon. I'm guessing there's a mage in there as well. Uh, all well, correct, except no spears with plus one to hit. That's the I okay. forgot. That's, that's the celic that's a, flare. A celic flare. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. But other than that, that's absolutely correct. Um, yep. Uh, and of course, the dragon. I'm sure you said that. Um, Stormwind Cav. No, uh, no. The, I think that's that's the elf list there. The, the rest of the units don't really matter. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So he did actually. The have rest of the units is just garnish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had uh, two regiments of dryads, which he was using as um, the sort of palace elite guard. Inf- palace guard. That's the one. Palace guard, man. Regiments. Woo, they're good. Yeah, fifteen, seventeen, crushing really, one elite. Really, really high nerve. Yeah, really, yeah. really high nerve. Um, that was the main thing that mattered. It was just high nerve, I guess. So it sort of made me not direct against them. But um, mm. I'll be honest in this game. I don't really know what I would have done better. If, if there's one thing I would have changed, it probably would have been putting the um, flyers on either flank. In every other game, and in fact, every game I saw uh, Greg play, he did the same thing. You put sort of one flyer on each flank and just really make your opponent sweat as you move them up and they uh, you know, have to respond to them. But this was the first mm. time I was playing against a list that also had two big nasty flyers in the form of the Dracon and the... And the um, dragon uh, but both his big nasty flies were bigger and nastier than my big nasty flies so that kind of meant that I, I ended up sort of standing off against them in the hope that um, Dan would sort of hold off a bit and not want to get double charged by my flies but he didn't really care he just rightly so too he moved them both just straight up into a forest and went charge me if you want which which meant which meant me instantly regret not putting them on either flank and kind of keeping them as threats I charged everything I possibly could in my army toward those archers to try to get them. And they just kept taking me off. They would just look at a unit and go, <laughs> that unit's dead, that unit's dead, that unit's dead. Every time I got close to them, like I would threaten that's, them. That's pretty strong. Threaten them yeah. in the flank with a regiment of pole arms and they'd just go, well, I'm not even going to rotate to shoot them. I'm just going to shoot them off without, hmm. like, you know, moves like that, which are like kind of risky because... If you fluff your dice, you've got the pole arms in the flank and then you're in trouble. Um, but it didn't really matter. I think Dan definitely maneuvered well and played well, but I felt like the matchup wasn't good for me. I just It was mainly just the archer horde, to be honest. Just one horde of archers that took off about more than half my army for, for no reprisal. Like it took the giant off in one volley. Like it's just... Mm. <laughs> wasn't great. Uh, right. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, didn't do that well in this game. I, I did try to claw it back a long time. Dan was convinced he was losing for the whole game as well, which was quite bizarre uh, because I wasn't killing anything. <laughs> but, um, but he was convinced he was losing, but he did end up getting up. Um, and, but I did, I did claw as much as back as I could. I really kept on those objectives and tried to beat him in the objective game, uh, but just couldn't, couldn't win the inertia in the end. The Dracons and the Giant went through a few units and the Archers killed everything else, so... Um, mm. Yeah, like I said, didn't really matter what else was in his army. They did pick up objectives in the last turn or something, probably. Uh, so that was a fourteen to seven loss to me. Ooh, I mean, so okay. Dan, the Dan one. That's what I meant. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so fourth round, it was invade this last one, and I was taking on stacks. Uh, so who's once again another really really good long term veteran of wargaming in Victoria. Um, and Stax took probably the weirdest army that I've seen or played against. He had, do correct me if I'm wrong here, but Shield Breakers. He mm-hmm. had regiments of these and he had seven of them. Okay. And I was like, ooh, okay, maybe he's going to run seven Shield Breaker units with Banner of the Griffin or something. And he didn't. So Siege Breakers, for those who don't know, are the Dwarven um, Crushing 2 troops. Hitting on fours, Defense 4, Crushing 2. To its, uh, 12 attacks kind of an all-rounder infantry unit you'd say like or um they're or more punchy the than anything side. so yeah. they hurt when they hit unfortunately they like average they'll only hit twice uh, six six times um but they convert those hits they're also movement four because they're dwarfs yeah yeah only yeah. dwarfs it's not like it's six regiments of rocks you got to deal with here yeah. yeah. Did he take um, mastiffs on all th- on the? Yes, on every single yep. one of his units had mastiffs. Okay. What a mastiff so, again? 
That's so right. that's a 12 inch shooting attack that you roll five dice and then it just keeps doing damage until it doesn't do any more damage. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, mm. it's funny. I've played dwarves lots of times. I've never seen anyone do that. Too. Yeah, so they had their time in the sun. Unfortunately, I only fed them defense five stuff. So he got a little bit lucky. I think one of his managed to get like five or six wounds um, mm. going on there. But across the board, the biggest downfall was that defense four against piercing archers. So mm. it meant that pretty much, uh, I'm sorry, elven generals out there, but... The tactics was really just point, click, roll. Um, it sounds a lot like my last game, actually, because my, <laughs> I mean, mine were mainly defense three guys, and they did have <laughs> they did have movement five for the most part, yeah. and a few fast monsters. But it ends up having the same effect if you don't have enough speed to get to those archers. Yeah. So, and it, it's there's no tactics in it or like classy general mm. ship. All I was doing is literally picking a unit that was A, out of cover, so I didn't have to hit on fives, was if I had multiple units, I would just pick the one that was going to have the most impact on the unit it would be charging. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was pretty lucky, I would say, in my dice rolls, is that I would do like seven, eight wounds and then roll an eight or a nine to get it off. And then after that, he stuffed up one move in round two and gave me a flank charge with my dragon without any consequences so he didn't have anyone else didn't have anyone else to uh counter that and and as soon as i got that charge i also knew that i would cripple that unit and so i could charge with my dracons into the front of another unit even if it was hindered i do believe and so as soon as i got all that um, it just sort of cascaded for him. So all of those seven regiments of shield breakers in the dwarf unit all slowly went down. In the end, he was left uh, that whole battle with two organ guns that I just tried to get across and use terrain so that they couldn't shoot me off. Um, hmm. So I ended up winning that one, I want to say 21, just on attrition. I didn't get the 21. Shield breakers must be reasonably pricey as well. Like No, only 130 points. 130 points. That's that's a pricey regiment by my standards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Ratkin. <laughs> How did you go in the last game, Hugh? Um, I played Anti, his name was. Not Andy, Anti. It's, um, and he was an interesting character. I couldn't quite read him a lot. <laughs> he wasn't giving you anything. Giving you anything. Mm. Yeah, like I would, I'd be like, oh, Poker bad face. luck with that, mate. Uh, that wasn't a very good roll or whatever. You know, maybe better luck next time. Something like wasn't that. Wasn't it? And he'd just, he'd just say... <laughs> Yeah, like that. <laughs> so, so then I, you know, I'd, I'd be like, "Oh, that was a ripper! Oh, well done! Oh, good charge there, whatever!" And then, so now the <laughs> listeners know what it's like to play anti. <laughs> um, so interesting game it was. Uh, he had the the big nasty dwarf uh, special character, colossal beastie which he used a giant war machine figure to represent, which was probably quite appropriate. Um, mm. So 20-odd shooting attacks, uh, nasty, nasty. D 25 plus D6 attacks. Golok? Golok, his name is, yeah. yeah. Uh, inspiring character. Uh, Stupid, giant, beastie bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, it plays like a siege tower. It's like... <laughs> it does yeah pretty much it just sort of chills <laughs> and just shoots the crap out of anything and if you get too close you get poured boiling oil on you or something but yeah he's it's a pretty nasty unit and a horde of um, shooters uh, Brock unit uh, regiment and uh, a bunch of misc dwarf infantry um, yeah pretty interesting game he also had the uh, the giant stone beastie and the not quite so big stone beasties I, in case well, listeners don't realise, I'm shit house at remembering names, and by shit- <laughs> <laughs> I, I just make up names for units, and it makes it very hard to follow on an audio me- medium. I realise that. I apologise for that, but nevertheless, I feel like I feel like you get the gist. Yeah, stone elementals, bigger stone elementals, whatever. Is the monster is like the big um, earth elemental, kind of like um, Infernoch for the Abyssal Dwarfs. No, I didn't have that. Just just a regular stone. Okay, so just greater earth element. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And um, Golok, yeah. And uh, so I played a weird game in this one in that I sent quite a few units right up a flank where there was a couple of giant hills and he was kind of never going to get to them. So I walked them up the flank. This was the one where you had to get into your opponent's side. You're trying to invade their territory. Mm-hmm. Um, invade? Yep, yep. Great. Quite, well, well, well named. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it was 
I, I was well up on unit strength, pardon me, early. But uh, that meant that, of course, I was outnumbered in the main fight, so to speak. Mm. Um, and after being shot off repeatedly by the elves in the previous game, I didn't love my chances against the horde of shooters. They're not elf shooter nasty, but they're still pretty pretty nasty. And in the first turn, they put like 14 wounds on my... Um, That's on, pretty nasty. On, fi- <laughs> on fives to hit <laughs> yep. on my horde of pole arms. Uh, which, yeah, oh, needless to say, work. was was a hell of a roll. So yeah, moved on to my turn, it was slightly abashed, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, proceeded up the board. Did manage to charge them with a birdie, uh, which just sort of slowed them down a little bit. But it was enough to slow them down. And then my game plan was really just just slow down in the middle, just clog him up with giants and units and whatever, while my while I had at least five unit strength on his side of the board. Uh, this really worked quite well. He gradually won the fight in the centre, uh, but at the cost of running out of time to get over the board. And then on turn six, we we're in this weird position, which comes cro- when I would use this particular strategy anyway of trying to hold the opponent up and get unit strength over the other side of the board, as opposed to the other main strategy in this one, which is to just charge like and try to belt straight through them and then get over the other side. Um, the more sort of gentle approach, if you like. You often find yourself in this position where you're like, well, okay, I did gradually lose that center grind, but I'm up at the end of turn six. So four plus, you win. One to three, I win, <laughs> which is where we're at. He was like able to move the earth elementals over if there was a turn seven, and that would make the score go from like six four to seven six or something like that. Right. So uh, I had yeah. won that die roll and therefore the game. So happy days, lucky me in this case. Um <laughs> so, yeah, I went uh, two wins and two losses for the event, which was okay, playing an army I'd never played before. It wasn't quite as, like, that, super powerful as good. I was hoping. But you, you reckon it's very good. Thank you, Benson. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, like, if, the first time playing Kingdoms of Men, which has traditionally been a difficult army to try and get right to do well with, getting placing how you did was pretty good. Yeah, thanks, man. It was a fun army to play, although I did have one... Re- I have to share a really... Uh, you know, bead of sweat inducing moment. Okay, so for the listeners uh, to paint you a picture of uh, of what this kind of looks like, um, Mike has a beautifully painted army. They're green and white. They look uh, excellent. Bretonian kind of figures mainly. Some very old school, cool miniatures, including some metal giants from like nineteen Dickety two. Uh, that look especially beautiful. I had uh, taken his army out or, and put them all on top of his like movement tray kind of thing, uh, which was like a plastic box. Yeah, I kind of like oh boy. wobbled a wee bit and the oh. big heavy metal giant tumbled off the sides, only from about mm. two feet up because only, only the height of the box. But it was enough to obliterate him. He blew into like a bajillion pieces. All the all the glue spots, as far as I could tell, rather than like permanently damaging him, perhaps. But it uh, was a very sad moment, and I felt sheepish to say the very least, as I had to as admit, you would. had to admit to Mike that I'd borrowed his army and then destroyed his beautifully painted figure. Uh, so yeah, I felt uh, very very guilty indeed, and I do apologise at the end about that. But. Um, he, I'm sure he'll be able to glue him back together and he's okay. And, of course, Mike took it in his stride and didn't particularly mind. But uh, I, I imagine I'm banned from future borrowing of Mike's army <laughs> after that, that shit house. Uh, uh, yeah. Always lie down your large, tall, metal miniatures. Yeah, unless it's appropriately weighted or somehow fixed to the board. Yeah, it's it had magnets and stuff, but like it was on a plastic bit a metal, of it rather uh, than a metal yeah. bit, if that makes sense. Right. It, it's a metal yep. figure. Like, lie down your metal figures in particular. Yeah. Listeners, just uh, take it easy, especially if it's not yours. So that sort of rounded it all up. We were quite lucky. We had a, a relatively big tournament. Uh, so there was 20 people in there. Uh, so the dwarf Brock list, unsurprisingly, came first. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mike... Mike Crossman, who was dabbling with his Empire of Dust, came second. Uh, none of us played him. Uh, I managed to come third again uh, with that one. And oh, yeah. we'll sort of circle back. So three, four, and five, or third, fourth, and fifth, all were elves. So to come back to your six by four, I honestly think that the extra movement and the ability to take things like Dracons that hit hard with fast movement mm. really, really helped the elves. So to come like three of the top five uh, in this tournament, I think was testament that maybe we should 
shrink down the, the board, maybe not to 4x4, four four, as Hugh said. I think that's probably a little too small, but maybe a 5x4. Mm-hmm. That, that could well be the case. It's an interesting observation. But also, I think elves can struggle at that points level, not so much because their list is underpowered at all, but because those, you know, they have so few units that a few bad rolls can really just end you. I think, like, um, you, you could say that for any army, I suppose, at 1,500 points, mm. but particularly when you've got a figure that's like 400 points and you roll one double six or double one at the wrong time, it can go really pear-shaped for you. So there are sort of two sides to that coin, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it's fair to say, I think, if you beat the Brock Rider guy, it's very likely you would have won the event. So very, very close. Yeah, I think there's probably a few more caveats. So I didn't have to play Mike and I didn't have to play AG. True. (laughs) And I came third. Fair point. (laughs) So... I do- probably dodged a bullet and I probably would have lost those games, arguably. And AG totally choked in the last <laughs> round because he got well under 25,000 attrition points. Uh, so <laughs> well, in, in, the, in the last round, so it was up against Glenn, the Brock guy, uh, and AG to battle it out for first and second. Is that right? Yep. Uh, or who got first. Uh, and it was a lopsided affair. Um, so Glenn got the mop out and uh, cleaned up. Oh. So much so that uh, there was, I think, AG went all the way from arguably first down to sixth, I think, with his Varanger. Oh, he was using ouch. four different armies, so um, that right. was an interesting one. Really? That's a lot to yeah, carry so, around over the day. Yeah, AG brought four armies, and in each of his rounds, he asked the opponent to request what they played. And yeah. in that last round, he took Ogres against... The dwarves. Oh, good choice so by the dwarf player. To choose well, Ogres. that was it. Was the only one left he didn't actually choose. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so he was left with ogres, and I'm surprised nobody else picked it. But uh, it worked out very well for the dwarves. Well, o- ogres are you know they're they're a strong army, but we just discussed how much they can't deal with hard hitting fast infantry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I guess. That's exactly what happened. Mm. Uh, from my understanding, AG just couldn't get enough wounds on them to break them because they're dash. Um, mm. His big unit of boomers, I think he had two shooters or maybe two boomers. I can't remember. I was going to say, two ogre but, shooters uh, is about the only thing I can think of that's going to reliably get, get rid of those. But, but even then, it doesn't yeah. because it converts, but then it won't convert high enough to get a dash 22 unit off. And so you're always looking at two rounds per unit yeah. to get off. Perhaps you're right. And, uh, uh, what do you take against that kind of... But even if you're not talking 15 regiments of Brocks, maybe you've got like one of those Varangar armies that have several flyers and heaps of heavy knights and whatever else. What do you, what do you, so, what do you take as ogres? I think uh, as ogres, I, I just honestly, I think that they're probably a pip of nerve short for the price. Yeah, so at the I moment agree. they're fifteen seventeen, Benson. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I think that they probably need to be uh, sixteen eighteen. But fifteen that seventeen is it what, helps a lot. That's that's sort of that's normal for a you know large infantry unit. I think it's not so much that they're a pip of unit down, although that could well help them. It doesn't actually it doesn't sound bad if if that uh, Benson's rallying maneuvers are anything to go by. That sounds like you're onto something there, but. But isn't it more that they don't have those anvil units that other u- other armies that take, you know, hordes of large infantry also have anvil units to, you know, hordes of infantry with larger nerves that they can use for that role and also potentially cavalry units to uh, make sure that you can manoeuvre your opponent such that your large infantry get the job done. It's just... I think their problem is just that they're all large infantry and that's great against some matchups and not so great against others. I mean, you can take Red Goblins, 130-point mm-hmm. horde. Mm-hmm. That's probably the highest nerve with 1921, but they don't do anything. It's a very low yeah. horde nerve, too. Mm. Mm. Are they good? Hitting on fives, defense four. No. <laughs> 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 but I think at the end of the day, like, if you did get them up, um, then you give the banner around them, and all of a sudden they're now, like, what's that put them on? 1719. 1719. They are... Uh, anchors so they are quite diverse and they can compete with uh, their points now that you're saying that it sounds a bit too good what, do you, what does an infantry army do against that? 
is going to outgrind it. But they'll they'll outspeed it. So an infantry. Like, the thing yeah, is, the still points, the points are high, so mm. you're paying for it. But enough about the tournaments. Uh, we'll have a bit of a break, and we'll be back in a bit. And we have returned once more to discuss the third edition. So you can pre-order all the stuff now. Um, I've got my Gamers Edition pre-ordered, as has old mate Andrew as part of the gaming group. Um, so, And it's coming out in October, so not too long away. But in the meantime, let's discuss what has been confirmed and what's rumoured. Mm. Okay. So... How about we go through some of the confirmed aspects? Okay. Uh, so if we jump onto the COW forum, so that's relatively new. So for followers at home, www.kowforum.com. We can see there they've got a, a whole thread that's dedicated to some of the rumors and confirmed. So the interesting the thing that has been confirmed is that there's five new armies and there's going to be 14 armies in the core book that is 380 pages. Lots and lots of fluff in there for people like myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of those armies are Basilans, Dwarfs, uh, Elves, Northern Alliance uh, that have beautiful models, I think. So that make uh, up the good portion of, if as long as there's that kind of alignment, they're the good guys. Mm -hmm. There's and Forces of Nature and Ogres, uh, which will be the, the fence sitters. Then, same with Trident uh, Realm. Oh, and the Trident Realm. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then we've got uh, Abyssal Dwarves, Forces of the Abyss, Empire of Dust, Goblins, Night Stalkers, Orcs, and Undead. Okay, so the bad guys clearly outweigh everyone else. As usual. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they probably wanted uh, to make sure that they still had enough of a hype train to ride after the initial release, um, yeah. which is why they chose to save Ratkin for the second release. Uh-huh. So that's what's going to carry it over. Mm. I assume. <laughs> what is this second release you speak of? Well, uh, they also say that about six weeks later, they'll be releasing an, a book called The Armies of Panathor, which is uh, a very fantasy-sounding name and not Mantica, which is quite quite sexy. Hooray! Uh, so yep. The Armies of Panathor is the uh, e third ed equivalent of Uncharted Empires, which will include... Uh, you know, the other armies that aren't in that list that Selick like just so read. So that'll out. be in December sometime. Yeah, so the Ratkin army mm. book with some, like, friends. Yeah. Mm. But apparently yeah. there's five new armies as well. Yeah, are all the five new armies all in that one? Or, oh no, we've already got Northern Alliance. Yep. So the other so four, there's one. four new armies in that book, I suppose. Yeah. And so rumor has it that uh, one of those is the Twilight King. Right. So a finalized list for the kin. Yeah. So that means that there's still three more? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Like, That's interesting. Quietly cross my fingers here for Cloud Giants. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but we haven't finished writing the list yet. I don't know if it'll make it. We've got a, we've got a deadline. <laughs> we've got to play test it. All right. We've got to get onto that. Uh, so I know for a fact that they are reviewing... Uh, armies of Panathor at the mm -hmm. moment, that rule book. So uh, that won't be too far away, no doubt. You mean playtesting mm -hmm. or, or editing it or something? From my understanding of their playtesting and all of that rule committee side of things is that they have a list and they sort of agree on it and then playtest it, then tweaking it all the way up to print day. As long as it's edited and there's not like copies of paragraphs and spelling mistakes galore. Ben is critical about that. Mm. Mm. Okay, so... The other thing there is that no current armies are being removed. We've all seen the limited edition stuff that you can now pre-order. Uh, there's some pretty good dioramas there with usable minis. Uh, mm -hmm. We've already mentioned that the rule book's going to be 380 pages. Uh, I, I can't remember where I saw it, but it's going to be fast-forwarding about 10 years of fluff mm -hmm. and story. I love 380 that. pages is a big book because they're, they're so tight and concise with their rules. I can't imagine that's like... More than I don't, I don't know, a hundred pages or something, right? Like, and then you've got you've got your army lists, which again, lots of the army lists as we Couple know are only like four pages long or whatever, six to eight at the most. 
And then you've mm. just got a shit ton of fluff in there, I presume, and lots of cool pictures. I hope it sounds like they're really leveling up in that department. Mm. I read that um, the unit entries are going to get some decent fluff, not just like hero is a hero. Um, so there is nothing wrong with hero hero. There's many things wrong with hero hero, but we won't get into that. <laughs> so they're they're going to be expanding a lot on the law, which is good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I actually plan uh, loosely to to start a new army, but the army I really want rat themed to... undead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. Another ratkin <laughs> army would be cool. But no, if I could theme my ratkin army more around whatever fluff they give, possibly. But I don't want to make any promises in that department. But if I was going to make like an inferior army for third ed at some <laughs> point, then I may well do so. But I'd really like to build it in line with some of the new fluff and actually try to like. Mm-hmm you know fluff it up a bit more because you just don't see that in kings of war at the moment like nobody nobody even applies the fluff to their army in any way which is a bit of a shame yeah not yet so hopefully this 380 page book will assist with that so i think salamanders are getting a new hot unit was one of the the terms there i think that's the phoenix probably something fiery Um, that that sounds right well the phoenix that we've already seen and looked at uh that's been brilliantly painted there as well um, so that is floating around there, so I assume they're getting that. The other one there that has been released is the Gore Blight Monster. So if you check out... That's the undead thing here. The undead monster. Um, so it's the only monster that I've seen for undead so far. It's got like a an AoE... Yeah, I'm kind of excited about that one. It's like an un- kind of undead like giant. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit of a Cronius, I uh, guess. Hmm. Uh, mm. uh, so pretty impressed with that one. So it'll be interesting to see how people use, I think. Uh, a lot of surge with the gore blight could be really, really dangerous. Um, but we'll see how that goes. I was going to say there's a new uh, unit type. So we've got your infantry, large infantry monsters. Now there's titanic monsters, mm. which is a distinction. And it's a 75 mil base, which presumably mm. uh, the titanic giant or the gigantic giant. Colossal giant. Colossal giant, yep. that's one. Uh, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> he'll be one of those, and uh, you know, another all the other ones. The that Phoenix you and all the other stuff. Really, yep. really big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trident Realms are getting a Dam Buster large cav unit. They're the frogs, surely. The Vanguard Frog Riders aren't they Dam Busters? Anyway, that'd be cool if they were. They would. Uh, so, depending upon how they're going to go with that, so rumor has it that the Trident Realms are going to be pretty handy. Uh, in third edition so looking to see how that all pans out Mm -hmm. another thing that's changing is unit strength so it's not necessarily going to be a regiment is two unit strength horde is three unit strength Mm. they're going to change it up depending on so let's try and balance it that way yeah it's probably could have a unit one horde a unit strength one horde. i think we expect it still to be similar what it is now as a baseline but then like it's cool that they can use it as another like point of strength like maybe Mm. this unit is 10 more points than it otherwise would be but it has units from mm-hmm. 4 instead of 3 or something and that that's its thing you know like there's just another sort of angle they can take with units or this unit's really fast and hitty but it has no unit strength for some reason or you, lower yep. than it should be or whatever yeah perfect and the other one there is as I was alluding to is the height that's changed I really like that they've tweaked all the height so it's now uh, an, an average human will be a height 2 and a mm-hmm. horse will be height 3 um, I think that's good rather than height zero. What does that even mean? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think they've sort of cleaned all that side up uh, pretty nicely. Um, what else do we have? We know of a new special rule, the Wild Charge, that's been released, mm-hmm. which is basically um, uh, is it like the Whip of Celery. It does that same sort of thing. So you roll a dice and you kind of add that to the amount that you can charge for your distance. Yep, so important to note that this is not adding to the movement. It just adds to the charge range, yeah. Mm. Um, What else has been sort of alluded to? So over on Kings of War Worldwide, so they've got a a podcast as well. Go check out those guys. So they've just had an interview with Kyle um, Mm -hmm. that's sort of gone through a whole heap of things as well. So he's alluded to that individuals are going to work slightly different to normal. So Mm. there's Mm. been been a few lines of discussion there that maybe not all of uh the individuals will be able to stop units um so there might be that sort of hero hero stopping but uh i'm very keen to see how much uh that that's actually true but we'll see we'll see 
Interesting. Uh, and the other one there is that not all flyers will have nimble. Mm, which is also good. Which it's is also like the unit good. strength thing. Mm-hmm. Mm, um, and the, the last one that Kyle sort of mentioned was that... So there's going to be a lot more irregular units in... Okay. Third edition. So that's going to shape the way people make lists. They yeah. might use it to debuff, I guess, some of the, the, the big units. Make it maybe, harder to spam super yeah, units. Maybe Brock Riders, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Mm. I've also heard the uh, widely spread rumor that all Ratkin units will have, you know, some randomly generated attacks which do more damage but have a chance of hurting themselves. Yeah. And also that um, all the characters have 13 attacks also, I heard that. Yeah, we're not wish listing here. Wait, what do you mean? It's not... <laughs> they haven't released the armies of Panathol yet. It's not too late to influence them. As long as they make the assassins rubbish, I'm happy. Yeah, the assassins <laughs> do have to be rubbish. That's actually a prerequisite. Even I can't argue with that. We have been talking for a very, very long time uh, and we're almost out of beers. And so, uh, a big thank you to all of our listeners. Thanks. For Thanks, guys. Chat- for yep. chatting on Twitter and Facebook. As well. Mm-hmm. Shout outs to Ronnie. Thanks for making the Rat King the best army in third ed. I do appreciate <laughs> it. I won't let you down. And thanks for voting for the Cloud Giant units. There's another one coming. Get ready for that one. Too easy. All right, guys, we'll sign off there. Thank you very much. And we'll speak to you soon. Peace. Yeah, direct misfire blowing up the game. Talking many war games is our aim. Rule books to advice, we cover it all. With the best tactics, we never fall. Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix. Math hammer doesn't work, it's a trick. Follow along, stay up to date. Comment, like, subscribe today. Come check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Direct Misfire. If you want to shoot us an email, directmisfire at gmail.com. Sodium tank was way too high. I tasted like, you know, I started out as a delicious steak and by the end of the game I was a goddamn anchovy. Nasty.